Welcome back to another video. As always, my name is Gareth from Park Cameras, and today we are going to be checking out Photoshop again. We recently did a video all about the new scar replacement tool in the Photoshop 2021 update, so go ahead and watch that if you haven't already. I'll pop a link to it down in the description, possibly even in the comments. But we are going to be looking at, specifically in this video, one of the other big features of the 2021 update to Photoshop, which are the neural filters which make portrait editing oh, so easy, simple, quick. The workflow speed improvements here are just crazy. Now, there's some really, really useful stuff with these neural filters. There's some stuff, which I'm gonna to be totally honest with you, is a little bit crazy. It's a little bit out there, but I appreciate it being in here, you know? Who knows when it might come in handy? We're gonna have a look at all of it. Let's dive into Photoshop. As always, we're gonna be using the Creative Cloud version, so the subscription version. So this is Adobe Photoshop 2021, the latest update as of posting this video. Let's dive in. I've got this photo here, and now we used this before for our frequency separation video. Uh, no more. Is that gonna be a problem for us? We're gonna go ahead and show you how you can do exactly what we did in that photo, pretty much with I think it's two or three clicks in total. I mean, it's crazy to me. So all I've done, I brought this photo into Photoshop. You can see I've got the one layer, the background layer here. So we haven't done anything else here. We're just gonna go straight up to filter and down to neural filters. And Photoshop is going to analyze where our subject's face is in the photo. So you can see it's put a box around there and it's gonna bring up this tab on the right. So we can now use skin smoothing and style transfer. We've got a couple of other buttons. We're gonna to get to all of those, but let's start off with skin smoothing. This, for me, probably the most useful, probably the one I'll actually use for real, of this whole feature. And for portraits, this is this is a big deal. This basically does exactly what you'd imagine. It smooths out the skin, it removes imperfections and things like that. Now, our model skin is already really, really nice, but, you know, it's, it's just a nice little way to kind of smooth out some things. So let's go ahead and click that on. Photoshop is gonna just load, work out what's in the photo, and there we go. It's already made the adjustments. We've made one click, and it's made a bunch of adjustments to just smooth our skin, get rid of any imperfections. We've got a nice little button down here so we can preview the changes. Now, let's click that to turn the changes off, and back on, off, and on. Subtle, but really quite decent, you know? A really nice thing that we might have done with things like the clone stamp, the healing brush, maybe a bit of frequency separation, all done in a single click. Amazing, I think that's genuinely amazing. Then you'll notice you've got two sliders here which we can adjust as well, smoothness and blur. So let's bring the smoothness up a little bit, something like 25. So that's had quite a lot. That's just gonna further add more smoothing to the skin and then we can blur a little bit as well if we wanted to. Now like I say, my, our model here has got really nice skin anyway so we wouldn't need to do any of that but that just helps with any imperfections and things like that. And if we zoom out and just turn this off and then on, a huge difference has been made. If we zoom in here a little bit, off and on. We've really helped to just smooth out that skin. Now for me, that's a really big deal. That really, really speeds up portrait editing if you wanna just do those, those little adjustments which are not massive, they're, they're subtle, but they make a difference to the overall image. Of course, once you've done that, you could still go in with the clone stamp with the healing brush, all that kind of stuff if you want to, make further actual specific adjustments. But to be honest, I think this is, uh, this is a pretty natural way of just doing a little bit of skin retouching, and it's so fast. It's unbelievably fast. Now, style transfer is probably not something I would use uh, anywhere near as much, but let's turn it on for a second. Essentially, it allows us to add the style of another image to our photo. While I think that looks really cool, to be fair, that does look really, really cool. And there's a, there's a bunch of different photos here. So for example, let's pop this one on. I think this looks like a, a really interesting kind of artistic way of looking at a, a photo. It's probably just not something I would use that much. I mean, some of these are very interesting and it's worth having a flick through, but it's just not probably something I would use that often. So let's turn that off for now and let's come over here to the beta filters. Now these are filters that obviously, as the name suggests, are in beta, so they're not final, but they give an idea of some of the stuff that Adobe has been working on for this kind of thing. And this is where I say it gets a little bit crazy. Some of it is genuinely amazing. Some of it is a little bit out there. Let's just have a quick look. So let's turn on Smart Portrait. This is probably one of the ones you might end up using. 
there's things here like you can adjust the expression. So for example, our subject here looks quite happy, but let's say we really wanted to go all out with the happiness. We can tick that on, be happy. Now, while I've been experimenting, I found that bringing it up by three or four or five actually isn't too bad. It actually does add just a little bit of a, a smirk or a little bit of a smile without going too crazy. Bringing it up by a lot though, as you can see, is, is crazy. It is crazy, but it's quite a cool thing to have in Photoshop. I would never ever use this, ever. Apart from, like I say, to add maybe a tiniest bit of a smile or something like that, just to, just to do that. But it's not something I feel like I would need to do unless I really just needed to, oh, just the tiniest bit. But to be honest, adding anything in more than three, four or five just starts looking really out there. So it's not something I would use. Something which I think can be actually quite cool is the gaze function, which actually adjusts your subject's gaze, either left, right. It's actually pretty cool. So right here, we've got her looking directly at the camera. If I was to pull the gaze over by, even by 15, 16, Photoshop will just load that, it'll work out where her eyes are and make her look a different direction, which is pretty crazy that it's able to do that. I mean, it hasn't worked that well here, if I'm honest, <laughs> but some of the photos I've been experimenting with it, it does work pretty well in some situations. But again, these are in beta, so it's a kind of, hit or miss, it depends on the photo. There's a few different things here. We can adjust the light direction, the head direction. Again, they work with kind of varying degrees. Something which I did like, especially for this photo I noticed, depth aware haze here. Let's turn that on. Let's turn smart portrait off. Now depth aware haze is gonna add haze to the background of your photo based on the depth it thinks there is in the photo. So here is added it all behind our subject. I think it's pretty cool in terms of masking. Uh, we can up that warmth a little bit as well of the haze to make it kind of a, a more sort of golden rosy color. And if I bring the level of haze down, I actually don't think it looks too bad at all. I think this is something that could be quite useful for certain types of photos. I mean, if I turn that off and on, you can see I, I quite like it actually for certain things. I can probably imagine some applications where that might be quite useful. Then you've got things like being able to take the makeup over from one photo to another, things like colorize where you can, you can really start to go a little bit crazy with the interesting color grades and things like that. Much more of an artistic choice, super zoom and JPEG artifacts removal, which as you can imagine, removes any artifacts you might have from JPEG compression. So overall, I think this is actually pretty cool. I think it's really nice that this is in here. I can imagine using the skin smoothing, that part of it a lot. That seems like a really useful tool to have available to you while you're editing, especially for portraits. You know, I do a lot of skin retouching and clone stamping and healing brush and all that kind of stuff. And actually this looks really natural and really good and pretty subtle, like you haven't gone crazy with it. So that's definitely something I would use. Uh, it's quite nice, it's exporting to a new layer as well. So we've got the original layer and then the new layer. Of course, we could then go in and use uh, a layer mask to adjust where it's affected and things like that if we wanted to. So we could actually do it multiple times with different layer masks to affect different parts of the face to different degrees if you wanted to. It probably would still end up being quicker than doing a full skin retouching session with frequency separation and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's a really useful thing to have available to you. And along with the sky replacement, pretty creative in terms of what is now available in the 2021 update. Some of the smart filters with the, the beta the beta filters, I don't know that I'll ever really get around to using them properly. I can't imagine using them for, for professional work. I just can't, I don't think I'd be able to bring myself to do it. But, you know, there might be a situation where it actually works really well. So who knows? Now, if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, anything at all, pop them down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this as well. What do you think about all these filters? Would you use the skin smoothing? Would you use the be happy or the anger filter? Would you use that? Maybe the surprise one, maybe the age one. I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments. Uh, as always, let's get a conversation going on down there. Of course, this whole thing was brought to you by Park Cameras for all your photographic, your video needs, everything you could possibly think about when it comes to taking photos you can go and check out Park Cameras down in the description. There's a full list of all the equipment used for this video, the photos, everything down there as well. So go check that all out. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe because that always helps out the channel. I will of course see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.